2022 gave us tons of great new games to play on PC. We've got a list of some really great ones, 30 or so in fact, so let's get started off with number 30 and talk about Scorn. Scorn is a weird one, but on compared to any other game on this list, it actually feels the most like an old school PC game. This is more of a puzzle mist style game, more than a first person shooter or anything like that. It was kind of marketed as such, but essentially what this is is a slow paced, slow burn artsy experience where you're trying to navigate through this weird grotesque world with a really unique and inspired art style. The game is definitely a little busted, a little obtuse, and hard to crack if you're not into these types of games. It is definitely not one for everybody, and I think us here at Game Ranks, we tend to like it more than a lot of other people, but it's a short and strange experience, and if you like something weird and different, but you can put up with some frustrations, we still recommend checking it out because the nastiness, like just how drippy and wet and spooky everything is about this game world is still worth experiencing. Next over at number 29, we have Stray, the cat game from newcomer indie developers Blue 12. Uh, this is a pretty linear, straightforward adventure where you play as a cat in a sci-fi world. You're navigating your way through a cyberpunk stylized city inhabited only by robots, just trying to get out of here and figure out what's going on and reunite with your cat buddies. It's kind of like a lonely, meditative experience. It's very simple gameplay wise, but it's got some incredible moments, some cool set pieces, and just a lot of charm. I've said it before, but this is kind of like lo-fi beats the video game. And if you get what I mean by that, this game might be for you. Next over at number 28, we have Ghostwire Tokyo. This is from the people behind The Evil Within, but they went in a different direction this time around in an open world Tokyo first person shooter, but you're not using guns, you're using magical spells that you're casting from your hands, kind of Doctor Strange style. And it's a very unique game with a really, really cool spin on traditional Japanese horror monsters uh, based on mythology and old tales. And it really works in that sense. The game essentially is structured kind of like a Yakuza game where you wander around a Japanese city and talk to ghosts and get random side quests and do stuff. Some of the open world exploration stuff feels kind of like filler, but there's a lot of fun to be had with just some of the writing and some really well done moments. Really, if anything, the game is just really unique in terms of the angle of horror it represents. Next over at number 27, we have God of War. The 2018 PS4 game has finally made its way to PC and people have been having a blast with it this year. It's a really cool game that gives a new spin on the classic God of War Kratos stuff with a bit more emotion behind the tail and just some cool axe throwing combat. At this point, if you haven't experienced the game on PC, it's a good opportunity to do so because it runs pretty well and there are a ton of goofy mods for it if you wanna mess around. This game absolutely rules. It was our favorite game the year it released back in 2018 and it still holds up today and is still worth playing, man. Next over at number 26, we have Total War Warhammer 3. This is the third in the Total War trilogy from Creative Assembly. And once again, is it a big old RTS game? You're building armies, you're using more classes, and it's centered around the realm of chaos. It features multiplayer once again and bigger battles. And like all the other games that Creative Assembly puts out and specifically the Total War ones, expect a bunch more DLC and support in the coming years. This game is going to become much bigger than it already is. If strategy of any kind is your bag, you've probably already played at least one Total War Warhammer game, but if you haven't yet, now is a good time to get in because this one has been going strong since February. Next over at number 25, we have Entropy Zero Two. Now the original Entropy wasn't the best received, but Entropy Zero Two is an awesome sequel. This is probably one of the better Half-Life fan mods you can get. Uh, you play as Combine soldiers and there's a story, there's voice acting and the whole nine yards. Valve game fans are killing it these last few years. If Valve isn't gonna make games in the Half-Life universe other than the Half-Life Alex, which is great. The fans have been doing it for us. They've been giving us more stuff really, and uh, Entropy Zero Two is a really good example of that. Next over at number 24, we have Lego Star Wars, The Skywalker Saga. They've done it. The crazy bastards managed to cram every single mainline Star Wars movie into one Lego game, and it's really cool to see new spins on the classic Lego Star Wars games and the new movies represented as well. Love them or hate them. But still, uh, what they did here is essentially a, make a bigger, better Lego Star Wars game with more compelling combat, better shooting, more puzzles, and more things to do. There's a bunch of emphasis on open world and vehicle exploration in this, and it is a lot. This is an absolutely 
absolutely massive game that is a huge love letter to the original LEGO Star Wars games that so many people loved, and also just a love letter to Star Wars, and we gotta love it for that. Next over at number 23, we have Multiversus. This is the free-to-play Warner Brothers Super Smash Brothers clone that actually turned out to be pretty good. It's got some compelling combat and some really cool characters. You can play as Tom and Jerry and fight Batman and Shaggy from Scooby-Doo if you want. And the game is still growing today with more characters being added. I'm curious to see how long this one will last, but so far it seems like people have been digging it. We certainly have, just as kind of a change of pace. And hopefully they just keep adding more DC characters Personally, that's what I'm in it for, but yeah. Next over at number 22, we have Dying Light 2 Stay Human. Now this released in the beginning of 2022, but if you haven't played it yet, it's a pretty damn good game. I'm still not sure if it really topped the original. The original Dying Light with all its DLC is something absolutely incredible, but Dying Light 2 is still a fun playthrough with some really cool environments, some compelling enemy encounters and quests, and of course, just really fun parkour. The exploration, just because of the vibe and atmosphere here, is really fun. And if you're just looking for a bunch of zombies to kill, I'd say this is probably your best bet on PC this year. Now over at number 21, we have Sonic Frontiers, the divisive Sonic game where if you're a hardcore fan, you probably love it, and if you're a casual fan, you probably don't. For us here at Game Ranks, we lean on the side that we like it. It definitely has flaws, and there's a bunch of stuff we think could have turned out so much better, some stuff we wish still had some love, but as an open world 3D Sonic adventure game, it's a promising start to hopefully a bright new future of Sonic games where they've figured out open world exploration and movement and combat. I'm still waiting for a sequel to Sonic Mania, but at least in the realm of 3D Sonic, we have Frontiers now. And with some PC mods, it's even more fun to play. Now over at number 20, we have Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion. This is a loving recreation of the classic Final Fantasy Crisis Core with a dash of Final Fantasy VII Remake. That being said, it still feels very much like a handheld game still, but so many people love this original game for a reason, so now is a good time to check it out if you never got on that train in the first place. The story, the characters, some of the emotion and some of the vibe is quite different than what you'd expect if you've only experienced Final Fantasy VII, but it is still really worth it. Next over at number 19, we have Grounded. This is Obsidian's multiplayer survival adventure game that's kind of like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, where you play as a bunch of shrunken down survivor kids trying to live in the grass and avoid bugs. And it's really become a big thing. It's actually one of the most played games on Xbox. For a while now, it seems like people have been downloading it and loving it. And this year it hit its 1.0 release and it is stronger than ever. Now over at number 18, we have Marvel's Midnight Suns. This is a strange one. It's a Marvel game by Firaxis, but it's not necessarily just XCOM with Marvel characters. It's a bit different. The strategy combat is actually based around a card system and it's pretty accessible and fun to engage with really stylish over the top attacks, but a lot of the game is focused around story and characters. You're wandering around with your player created character, talking and building up relationships with random Marvel characters. It's a bit awkward. It's a little fan fiction-y and cringy, but also charming. You're either gonna fall one way or the other, so maybe watch some more videos on this one. It's a bit divisive, but it is at the very least worth considering. Next over at number 17, we have A Plague Tale Requiem, which is a sequel to A Plague Tale Innocence, one of our favorite games. Uh, this sequel basically picks up right where the last one left off. You are a brother and sister duo journeying through a plague-ridden medieval world where swarms of rats can take down entire cities, and you're just trying to make sense of it all and survive. It is an emotional, cinematic tale with some really cool action moments and fun stealth gameplay, and we love it. If you like linear single-player adventure games with story and awesome moments and some fun gameplay, it's a pretty easy, no BS recommendation. Next over at number 16, we have Cult of the Lamb. Ooh man, this is a great combination of an Animal Crossing style town builder game uh, with a dungeon crawler. So it's really, really fun and addictive, straight up. You're just a cutesy little sheep and you're building up a demonic cult. And to do that, you need to recruit followers and basically brainwash them to do your bidding. Uh, and then you need to go into dungeons and fight bosses and get loot and bring it back to your little cult town. It's got fun combat, it's got a lot of good jokes and goofs and some really good music and it's honestly one of the most underrated games of the year. 
Now over at number 15, we have Roller Drome. This is a short, sweet, simple game that's essentially, what if we took Tony Hawk's Pro Skater and combined it with Max Payne style third person action shooting? Yep, what you get here is an incredibly fun and challenging game where you do tricks in the air to refill your ammo. You grind, you flip, you do all kinds of stuff. And while you can't technically fall in this game, it's still challenging because enemies are crack shots and you need to move quick. And it is just a really satisfying and fun gameplay loop. If you're a big fan of these types of genres, which I personally am. It's like one of my favorite games of the year. Uh, we can't recommend it enough. Next over at number 14, we have The Planet Crafter. This is an open world survival game, uh, but with a planetary spacefaring spin. It's all about terraforming. You know, you're doing the survival stuff, you're collecting stuff, you're getting loot, you're building up your bases, but you're also managing the ecosystems and worrying about creating healthy, sustainable environments, atmospheres for you to live and thrive in. This one released in the spring and people are absolutely loving it. If you're a survival game fan on PC, this one's got a good spin to it. Next over at number 13, we have Teardown. This is a like fully destructible voxel style game that we've talked about for a while now, but now it's got its full release and it's really fun to play thanks to a variety of different modes and things to keep you busy. The graphics and just the technology, the physics and stuff going on behind the scenes here are really, really impressive, of course, but also just oddly satisfying to experience, like with a controller or with a mouse and keyboard. If you played this back when it was just like an experiment, there's much more to keep you busy now. It is very cool. We can't recommend Teardown enough, especially if you got the PC to really back it up. Next over at number 12, we have Sifu. This action combat game is incredibly challenging and a ton of fun. It is super rewarding to see through to the end because every enemy encounter, every moment is cinematic, stylized, but also really fun to play. By now, you've probably heard about the aging mechanic where every time you die, your character gets a little bit older and the trade-offs that come with that. That stuff is really awesome, but it's the moment to moment punches, the kicks, the hits, the finishers, the using the environment to your advantage that makes this game like a fun little challenging puzzle to slowly figure out and unlock and really perfect. And with that, I think I'll say that I think Sifu is a near perfect game, especially with a bunch of cool new updates and additions. You should definitely check it out. Now over at number 11, we have Metal Hellsinger. Hey, have you played Doom and thought, yeah, this music's really great, but what if I murdered things to the beat of the music? Well, Metal Hellsinger does that. And while other games have tried this concept, Metal Hellsinger does a really cool job of bringing in real world musicians and vocalists to make awesome shit. And that's a hell of a selling point, especially if you're a music fan or a first person shooter fan. Now over at number 10, we have Warhammer 40k Dark Tide. This is the newest shooter from the folks that brought you Vermintide and many others. Uh, and what we have here is another one of these style of games where you and some friends shoot some bad guys and customize your characters with a lot more options and generally a lot more things to do. Set in the sci-fi world of the Warhammer 40k universe and it's had some issues. It's had some server issues, some connectivity issues, and some bugs and stuff at launch. So while right now it might not be the best, most rock solid experience it still is pretty cool and the potential is there and we expect to see this one pop off a lot more in the coming months next over at number nine changing gears completely we have chained echoes if you love snes jrpgs Chained Echoes is kind of like a love letter to all that. It's a turn-based RPG with rich characters and story. It basically plays and feels a lot like you'd expect, but with a new coat of paint and some interesting new characters and a new world, and it's between 30 and 40 hours. It's got some character building up and customization, some JRPG stuff you'd expect, and it's a lot of fun. From the music to the gorgeous pixel art, they just really got this thing figured out. Chained Echoes is only like 25 bucks on Steam or something like that, and it is definitely worth it. Next over at number eight, we have Cuphead in the Delicious Last Course DLC. This gives you a ton of new bosses and a whole new area and new playable character to add on to the Cuphead experience, and it's really good. Honestly, you're gonna get some of the best boss battles here compared to the base game. They really, really top themselves with this one. It's a good amount of content for a low price, and if you loved Cuphead and you love that challenge, you get a lot more of it here, and we definitely recommend it. 
Next over at number seven, we have Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales and Marvel Spider-Man Remastered. Spider-Man got full PC release this year, and it is great to see PC fans finally embrace the Spider-Man love. From Miles in an open world New York City in the winter around Christmas time, to Spider-Man going through a very traditional comic book oriented Spider-Man story. These games are a ton of fun with a lot of really action packed moments that really just get what Spider-Man comics are about. Open world swinging is fun, combat is satisfying, the open world stuff is okay, but generally the story, the experience, the action set piece moments are worth experiencing. And the game is absolutely gorgeous, so if you wanna crank it up, you can. Next over at number six, Persona 5 Royal is on PC now, and Personas are finally having a big thing on PC, and it is great to see. Persona 5 is an absolutely massive JRPG with incredible music, wild characters, weird moments, good combat, and it's already being considered one of the all-time greats. If you haven't touched it by now, now is definitely the time. Considering it's on more platforms, finally, it's a good time, probably the best time to be a Persona fan. Next over at number five, the PlayStation hits keep coming to PC with Uncharted The Legacy of Thieves Collection. This is a gathering of Uncharted 4 and Uncharted Lost Legacy, which are both absolutely incredible action adventure games. Nathan Drake by this point, you know him, you love him. It's kind of the end of his tale with Uncharted 4. It's a big, crazy, long adventure. And then Lost Legacy serves as kind of a cool spinoff featuring Chloe that's actually really good. I don't know what more we could say about Uncharted at this point other than it's on PC now, play it. Now over at number four, we have Monster Hunter Rise. This game finally has made its way to PC, and if you're into a more traditional Monster Hunter experience, maybe if World wasn't quite your jam, Rise definitely delivers with tons of monster slaying, really good co-op opportunities that are really satisfying, and a cool world, and of course, tons of loot and crafting. It's Monster Hunter. They made another one, but this one's really freaking good. We loved it when it dropped on Switch, and we think for PC fans, like we wouldn't be including it this high up on the list if we didn't think it was worth the wait. Now switching gears completely at number three, we have Vampire Survivors. This fun little cheap indie game will give you hours and hours of addictive and fun gameplay. I will warn you, it is really, really addictive. The hours will probably melt away. While it's kind of like an inactive clicker style game, it's still pretty satisfying with how you navigate around hordes and hordes of enemies and slowly become more and more powerful until you become a wall of death and just watch the numbers go up. It's also a love letter to Castlevania style games with cool music and really good sprites. There's kind of like a whole little subgenre of this type of game now, but Vampires Survivors is just so awesome. It's not gonna be for everybody, but for the people it really clicks for, it's gonna like dangerously click. Now down to number two, in honor of some hardcore PC stuff, we have Dwarf Fortress. Now Dwarf Fortress is now on Steam. There's a whole Steam version and it is an incredibly in-depth and complex game that was free to play for a really, really long time. And now it's on Steam and people are really digging it. It is overwhelmingly positive for a good reason. If you're an old school PC gamer or even just like someone who appreciates something a little bit different with some good depth, Dwarf Fortress is absolutely wild. It's been featured in many places in museums just for how incredible it is. It's kind of been dubbed a living project and it's like a whole simulated world that you can play near endlessly. Some people take this up just as a complete hobby. And if you like 2D games, old school games, building up fortresses and surviving and just doing PC gamer stuff, I mean, there's not too much more to say. Dwarf Fortress is for you. Now down to number one, of course, Elden Ring. The biggest RPG of the year is great on PC. Like any good From Software game on PC, it has some issues, some have been fixed, but still, regardless, it is absolutely worth playing. Elden Ring is absolutely massive with tons of really fun open world exploration and crushing dungeons and boss battles that you come to expect from these developers. At this point, we've talked it to death, but we had to mention it here. Now, those are some games, but we also have some bonus games worth recommending that we couldn't squeeze in, including Tunic. This adventure game is challenging and satisfying and charming. Also, The Quarry. The spiritual successor to Until Dawn is really good and lighthearted and action-packed. Also, Sniper Elite 5. They made another one, and it's good. You snipe bad guys. Also, Midnight Fight Express. If you like top-down beat-em-ups with some customization, check it out. Brotato, an indie top-down arena shooter with a lot of goofiness to it. 
And the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, the re-released Stanley Parable with a ton of new content is worth experiencing. It's worth diving in again, trust us. But those are 30 or so PC games from 2022 that we recommend. Of course, we wanna hear if you got your own list down in the comments. All we're doing here is recommending games, so feel free to recommend some down there. If you like this video, maybe learn about a new game, click on the like button's all you gotta do. It really helps us out. And if you're new, maybe consider subscribing, hitting some notification bells or whatever, because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see